Let me um, begin by introducing um, the new provost of the university here, Bud Bazelak, who's a materials guy. We worked with Bud uh, at Ohio State for a number of years in the uh, engineering group, and Bud's a Clevelander, and I'd like to have you join me in welcoming Bud to his own school, and he's going to have a few words. Thanks, John. Well, let me just, you know, welcome you and thank you for being here. I hope you had a great, uh, great program. I, we, we actually, I just moved up to Case from Ohio State, where I spent most of my career. We had, ran the, this phase one program last year. It was a great crowd. I know everybody took a lot away from it they took, that they took back to, uh, back to the classroom. The provost, how many of you know what a provost is? You probably don't even know, right? That's a common problem. This is kind of the number two, so the executive vice president, the deans and others report, report to me. So it's been an interesting transition. I was a dean of engineering and a professor in materials engineering and, wel and welding engineering at Ohio State. Actually went to Hillside Junior High School. Isn't there somebody from Hillside here? Did you? Okay. <laughs> but, went to, but, but I went to Parma High School, so... Uh, Valley Forge, there was somebody from Forge here. My cousins went to Forge, and that was before Normandy was built, so that dates, uh, that dates things a bit. But I would just, you know, just say, I hope you had a great time. Um, you know, materials is, I'm speaking obviously somewhat parochial here since I'm a materials engineer, but materials is an exciting area. It's one, you know, I remember in high school, I, 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 I enjoyed earth science. <coughs> Actually, I've had these different career aspirations like firemen, policemen, baseball player, earth science teacher was somewhere in there before engineer. And, uh, but it was, uh, it's a really interesting field. I mean, it's one that I've enjoyed. It's one that I think is exciting because it brings together, if you, you know, if you go back, as you've seen, hopefully, the fundamentals are chemistry, physics. There's a strong component of mathematics, um, increasingly biology and biomaterials. So it really covers so many areas. And the so that's exciting for the students because they can really focus uh, on many, and the, not just the fundamentals, but they can actually learn and focus in different areas and fields. And when they get out into the career path, I think as you talk to students, and that's what it's about, even, you know, in high school and junior high school, kids are beginning to think about what do they want to do, not just for college, but what do they want to do with their life. And materials is a really exciting area in that it lets you do so many things. Because materials, everything we deal with, from aircraft to automobiles to pacemakers, materials is the enabling technology that makes that happen. And what allows us to make improvements in aircraft and biosensors and all these devices is an improvement in materials technology. So it's always going to be here. There are jobs in literally every industry. There are jobs around the world. And uh, it's just a great career path. I hope you've had a chance to see that. And, and a lot of kids, because as you know, they don't quite understand what it's about in, in junior high school and high school because it, materials is not a common. I mean, they might know what electrical engineering and mechanical engineering is and even today biomedical engineering. You know, most of them often don't find out much about materials engineering until they actually get into school. You know, you can help change that. That's the purpose of this entire program is to help, is to help us change that, make sure that our students understand what exciting field this is, and we appreciate you being here and appreciate you helping us do that. So uh, that's wearing my materials hat. Thanks for being a case, and uh, Western, and we hope you have a great visit. So thanks. Thanks, Bob. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and, and um, I, I've met all of you this week. My name is Suniva Collins. I'm with Swagelock Company as a, a uh, senior research fellow. My training is as a research metallurgist, and I came out of the material science department here at Case. Um, this is the second year I've worked on organizing this camp, and it's been a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. In fact, I, I went home last night, my husband looked at me, and he goes, you know, that's more work than work what you're doing this week. And, and I said, yeah, but it's a lot more fun, too, because I, I get to interact with a lot of people that I don't normally get to see, and I get to show them parts of my career that are really interesting and fun to me. Um, what I'd like to do right now, though, is recognize all of the people that have worked on this camp to bring it together. And I'd like to start by recognizing our, our two master teachers. Uh, we have Tom Glasgow, who is, I think, over working on Raku now. Oh, no, there he is at the door. He's. He has not figured out. <laughs> Tom just figured out the door, which is a good <laughs> thing for an engineer. Uh, the other person, of course, is, is Pat Duda, who came and joined us from the Albuquerque uh, Public Schools. And um, I hope you. I hope you have enjoyed these two this week. I've certainly enjoyed watching them work and watching them work with you. Um, we should also uh, recognize some of the other guests we have in the room. Um, you, you, of course, have met Chuck Hayes, who is the, the um, 
head of the ASM Foundation for Education and Research, which basically puts together and sponsors this program and uh, was a great help in, in helping us organize and, and, and get people to, to, uh, to come. Uh, the other aspect is uh, the people here at Case Western Reserve that have been extremely helpful to us. Um, Jim Cauley, uh, he's the, the uh, chair of the Department of Material Science and Engineering, and Patsy Harris, who um, has been working behind the scenes with me and doing things like setting up tables and making sure we had the right rooms and that there was enough pizza for everybody. So, you know, we're awfully glad to, uh, that, that both of them are going to help. I'm also going to recognize my daughter, Christina Collins, because if it weren't for her putting powders in bags, I don't think you'd have all the goodie bags you, you're going to walk out with. So she's going to be And then um, we have a, a guest this morning also um, that I wanted everybody here to meet, and this is Ulrich Koch from the Cleveland Engineering Society. He's representing the Roadshow. We had talked about that earlier this week. If you're interested in information on how to get a road show at your school, which basically is a, another program where we bring in two engineers and talk about engineering. Um, you can contact Ulrich or you can contact me and we'll, we'll uh, get that set up for you. Uh, what we like to oh, thank you. What we like to do at this point is um, we are going to start handing out certificates and, and uh, what we'd like to do is have everybody come up state your name after well I guess you don't need to do that once we state your name but we, we would like you to talk a little bit just for a minute or two about you know who you are what school you teach at what kind of students you have and how are you going to take what you learned back to them you know basically any sort of comments you have about the camp we're going to give everybody a couple minutes to, to just kind of download to the group which I think is always really interesting um, it's fun for us to put these camps together but it's also very fun for us to hear how you're affected by the camp and and what what value you see in it and and uh, how it's going to help you with your t with your students so I've asked uh, Jim Cauley to, to be the uh, master of ceremonies, basically officially handing out the certificates. Um, so he'll be up here to shake your hand and, and congratulate you. Um, you know, the other thing too is that I'm, I'm extremely grateful to Case Western Reserve for um, using, letting us use their, their facilities and their site as a location for the camp. It's, um, it's really wonderful because I'm sure a lot of you have not necessarily been on this campus for, for much time before, so you have an opportunity to really see what we have here, and it's a real gem here in Cleveland. Um, and that's another thing, too, is we want you to make your students aware that they have this right on their doorstep, and it's a, it's a wonderful place for them to consider if they are if they're going to go forward in their engineering career. Thank you, Jill. Yes. Yeah, and I would just say that if you want to bring your students back, or if you want some of us to come visit your students in the classroom, we'd love to do that. So that's great. That's why we're glad to do it. Wonderful. Okay, we've we've got everything here in alphabetical order. Yes. Yes, we're gonna let we're gonna let Tom interrupt. Oh, I'm always interrupting. I'm sorry. Stand but, forward. Yes. <laughs> We talked about destructive distillation of wood, and I said there were these <laughs> destructive distillation products, but you didn't get to touch it because it was all sealed up while we were doing our job. So I brought you this piece of creosoted metal, part of our experiment, so that you can smell it, touch it, and see what is deposited when you do destructive distillation. Tom, that's a delightful gift. <laughs> and I, we like it. We do. All right, we, we're going in alphabetical order because we're, um, we're kind of boring that way. I'd like to ask uh, Dawn Carvanis from, from Parma to come up, please. Well, my name's Dawn, and I teach uh, middle school in Parma, Ohio, uh, Hillside Middle School. And I also teach special education. So that's what I teach. I teach special ed. So I have at times felt very much in over my head here this week. But at the same time, I think that I got a lot out maybe of camp that's different than what everyone else got out. Because a lot of what we did, at first I thought this doesn't 
apply to me as much as it does to everyone else here. But uh, actually, a lot of the things that we did applied to me a lot because I do have inquiry. I don't have a lot of physical science standards, but I have a lot of inquiry standards to meet. And um, what better than all of the hands-on things that we've done, just things that will, I think, get the kids enticed and get them thinking about the future. And a lot of the things that we talked about today, like the, uh, the engineers and the uh, foundry in a box, I was thinking are great things that I can take back to the, the rest of the school at the science department. So thank you. Okay, next, Angela Cheadle, please. Okay, my favorite thing, speaking in front of adults. <laughs> um, my name's Angela, and I'm a new teacher at St. Martin de Porres um, in Cleveland, which serves a, a population of primarily minority low-income students, and um, they have not had much science exposure and lab experience. And I think one thing I'm taking away from this camp is to not be afraid to do labs and demos and just remind myself that, because that's really what I'm passionate about, and I've kind of not been able to do that. And I think next year, my students are in for a lot of labs. So um, I think the, the materials they gave us are great. And um, the fact that a lot of these labs don't require a lot of expensive materials is definitely something that um, I'm going to take away from this camp, too. So, and all of you guys are awesome, too. I made some friends. So that's it, I guess. Yes, of course. We have the I'm box so of raccoon. The box of raccoon. Okay. <coughs> all right. No, our, so the, this is like a quiz to see if you can recognize what you made after it's been fired. Our, our next teacher is Tracy Davis. Well, I have a very unusual job. I believe it probably is the best teaching job in that I am a gifted resource teacher and get to choose exactly what units I teach each year. So every year I can decide uh, what units I'm going to use for pull-out, but this year I will be doing some teacher training too, going into the classrooms and helping, trying to upgrade the um, science and uh, STEM, the STEM program. So. I certainly will be doing the rubber band competition, the invention convention, we'll be doing polymers, and a lot of the things that we did this week. Thanks so much. Our next teacher is Tracy Gross. Um, I'm Tracy, um, I came from Michigan along with two of my friends. We teach in um, Flushing High School in Michigan, which is just a public high school there. Um, this camp has definitely helped, I think, all three of us um, with the new standards that Michigan has instated. Um, every, every junior next year will be taking either chemistry or physics, and they will have to pass it to graduate. So we were looking for ways to bring the, I guess, the non-college track student and give them a way to be able to pass chemistry and graduate. And I think that this has given us a new way to look at the chemistry curriculum and, as Pat kept saying, pull things from what they already know and what they're familiar with, pull that in and, and give them a new way to look at it. So. Um, it's definitely going to help us a lot in this next year, which is going to be great fun, I'm sure. <laughs> so, thanks. Our next teacher is Michelle Heck. Um, I am Michelle, who has taught for the last 10 years math in middle school. I did do three years of ninth grade algebra, but found out last night that I will now be teaching science. So, along with some math, but now I have middle school science, which I found out. So this has been a godsend for me. 
God put you here for a reason, and I think this is part of it. Now I'm excited about teaching science. In the past, I would have said, oh, no. But I'm ready to jump in with both feet and to use a lot of what I've learned here in the next year. So. Our next teacher is Camille Holdren. I'm Camille Holdren, teach at uh, John Marshall High School in Cleveland, and I won't know what I'm teaching until probably a week before school starts, as usual, but I can teach either chemistry or physical science or biology and sometimes combinations thereof. I really appreciate the hands-on coming from a science background. I really like the kids to do, but sometimes it gets a little cumbersome, and I think they, as other people have mentioned, you guys have really shown us how Quick and dirty, some things can be um, when well planned, and they have been very well planned, <laughs> by the way, um, to, to pull this off. I also, one of the things that I appreciate incredibly, even though I just recently got my master's in ed technology, um, and, and all these PowerPoints from all of the, the profs, from all of you that are compiled, I am so excited to get to use, plus the, the CDs and everything that have information for us. Um, to be able to show some of those and utilize those for our students as well, pick and choose. But then the next difficult thing in Cleveland is going to be to try to find a projector to use them. So <laughs> who can't have everything? But thank you. I appreciate it immensely. Huh? Oh, oh. Our next teacher is Esther Jayapuram. I'm basically a high school science teacher, and I appreciate all the hands-on activities that I have learned in this workshop, because this is really a wonderful workshop, and it was really fun, and I could learn so much that I was not exposed to before, and I really appreciate the PowerPoint, the material, and all that, the knowledge we have gained from each one of them. It was truly a wonderful experience. And I'm sure that many more will be benefited from this type of a camp. And I thank each one of you for making this experience a wonderful one. And I'm sure I'm going to use all of these activities in my classrooms because I feel that basically as a physical science teacher and a chemistry teacher too, I would use most of these activities in my classroom. And I thank you once again for this wonderful experience. Thank you. Our next teacher is Nestor Kostrick, who was quizzing me about latent heat on the bus yesterday. <laughs> so, so be prepared, Jim. OK. I'm starting to perspire a little. <laughs> I'm afraid of your question when you get up. <laughs> the mold question. That was a good one. Yes. Thank you. Okay, I am Nestor, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm Nestor Kostrick. I teach at Glenville High School in Cleveland, not too far from here. If you go down East 105th, make a right at St. Clair and you will eventually reach Glenville High School. Our school is noted right now for its athletic programs, but someday we hope to make it known for its academics also. And uh, in a school like Glenville, like many urban schools, academics is something we all strive to achieve with our students, but our students, in most cases, are reluctant to help us out and learn what they need to. And uh, in this program, I think the hands-on approach 
will help our students possibly get that little spark that'll cause them to move along and think that academics are something good, they're something interesting, and hopefully they'll learn that problem solving is fun. Most of them don't like problems. I mean, in Cleveland, if they have a multi-step problem, that's a little too much work for them, and somehow we have to convince them that that's the way the world goes. And in this class, I've learned a lot. I think composites, I teach physics and chemistry, and uh, composites have sort of given me a lead into the, to the big crisis that's sort of facing the world right now. It's the energy crisis, the global warming, and all that. And I think I can relate this into my classroom and say, hey, if we're going to save energy, this is the way we're going to do it. We've got to make things lighter, and material science is one of the things that we'll be using to move us in that direction. So I found the class very useful. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed your company, our little exchanges, and uh, hopefully we'll meet again sometime in the future. Our next teacher is Saraswathi Kotharedi. Hi, I teach for Cleveland Metropolitan School District. I teach chemistry. Most of my students, they want to do hands-on activities. When I explain them about single displacement, I usually tell like um, how to do, but I never showed any activity like lab hands-on activities. Now I'm looking forward for this year so that I can show them like silver nitrate and copper, how they're going to react and they can see the activity. That is what I'm really interested for. And I thank everyone who conducted this camp. I'm looking forward for the next year. Thank you everyone. Our next teacher is Susan Kresman. My name's Sue. Um, I teach at Midview High School, which is in Grafton, which is south of Elyria. Um, this camp has been absolutely amazing. Um, I've been teaching 22 years, and you always hear, you need to do hands-on, you need to do inquiry, you need to do this, you need to do that. But you might be shown one or two examples. This week, it was constant. This is how you do it. This is it. And every example, everything that they were bringing in is stuff that you can find. It's, they modeled what we should or could be doing in our classrooms. And I, there are some activities they did that I've done before and I'm like, oh, that makes sense now. That it, it just like, it turned on the light. Um, and the other thing is that I really had no clue about the material science, it was sent to us you know, the workshop was sent to us by our curriculum director. And I said, okay, I'll go. Um, and I had no idea what I was getting into. And as you know, um, the day I walked in and saw the poster next to our room and I saw about the biomedical devices and the neurostimulators, I was like, oh my gosh, because if it wasn't for that, I would not be teaching at this point with my nerve condition. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody in the camp, to the people who ran it, anybody who has had, uh, you know, supported the camp. It has absolutely been wonderful. Our next teacher is Terry Marcy. Hello, I'm Terry Marcy and I teach at Flushing High School in Michigan. And um, primarily I will use this in my integrated science lab for the freshmen. And a lot of the hands-on things we will use and a lot of them for demos to get them thinking before we actually start 
um, the chapter. So I'm really looking forward to that. And thank you to everyone who put on the camp. Um, and you guys have an absolutely beautiful city. What little time we got to get out and see it. We were so tired when we got back. But um, so much information and so many resources, and I really look forward to being able to use them. So thank you. Our next teacher is Kathleen McGowan. Hi, I'm another Michigander from, originally from Cleveland. My whole family's from here. And I'm really excited about this camp. I am the um, science department chair at our school. And I'm, you know, I look through the curriculum and see any holes that we have in the curriculum. And I thought it was really good. But we were really stressing the past couple year career pathways. Um, just because of the changes, like um, Ohio, Michigan has a large changes in the job fields, and they really ask us to incorporate jobs in our teaching. And I really never even thought about or heard about like material engineering, the material field. There's so many new networks that we can get these kids interested in that. And I just think we could probably spark a lot of kids' interest just through our enthusiasm, showing them the demos, and you know, just talking about this. So I really appreciate all the knowledge that we attained through this camp and for you know everybody's support. Thank you. Our next teacher is Rob Nietzsche. Um, this has been a fun week. Um, I didn't even know about this camp until Monday morning. <laughs> and Amanda's like, you want to come? And I was like, sure. So um, I came down, and I, as most of you know, we've been talking and stuff throughout the week. I have a kind of a diverse background with a lot of internships and working in industry and stuff. And a lot of the things that we did this week, I understood beforehand, but they gave it a new perspective and gave it more in-depth. And the best part is all the ways that I learned to be able to demonstrate it and, and, and do labs and stuff. And that's great because I started the week um, with no job. And I was just like, oh, hopefully I'll get a job. Hopefully I'll be able to use this stuff. And uh, officially today, though, I did get hired at Cleveland Heights, as you I don't know, all of you know that. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to be able to, to use all this and, um, and all the connections that we've made. And I've never really been the case. And it's amazing, all the high-tech um, work that's going on here. It's incredible. And um, thank all of you. Next teacher is Virginia Porter. You bear. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm Virginia. Um, I work with Daniel Lee Morgan at with Cleveland's uh, Metropolitan School District. And um, the population that we are geared toward, or in my area, is majority African American, uh, maybe 3% of others. But as a whole, they're social learners. Um, and of course, as you probably found out this week, I'm very high energy. So <laughs> therefore, um, I do have high expectations for my students, and I do step in that role, and I step in it very hard. Uh, this week at the camp, I mean, thank you so much, Tom. Um, I've grown and I've learned so much from them. I mean, I'm one of these people that you teach me something, I'll take it to the next level. I'm going home, I'm going to buy what you have, and I'm going to try it, and I'm going to use different variables to see how it works. Um, I thank Pat so much because I saw myself in Pat, that high energy, let's get this done. We need to have this. Let's move on, organizing. I learned so much, and as a student as well as a teacher, I saw myself in many of you. Uh, and I learned so much from you. Uh, I thank the entire group because the um, cohesiveness that I saw, us coming together and the learning experience of different groups. I try to get in a different group so I can learn different styles. Um, anything to move our children to the next level because we've got to get our students ready for global competition. 
And with those expectations, I've learned so much that I can take. Uh, and I'm going to name my child, my grandchild, <laughs> Suniva. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will too. Um, <laughs> I have to. But um, I, I really did. I enjoyed it. I learned so much. I thank um, Ruby for bringing me here because on Saturday, I was just going to relax for a week. And um, I can't tell you how much this is going to benefit me as a person, as a professional. And um, I'm going to have students just like you with that 70, 77, 70, 70 uh, of the pie numbers that she memorized. And my student only got the 39, but I will get mine there one day soon. <laughs> I thank you all. It's been grand. Look forward to it another day. Our next teacher is Amanda Rabatin. Hello, um, Amanda Rabatin from Shaker Heights. Uh, this week's been really interesting for me because I've been to other workshops as we all have and I also feel that a lot of the information that we gained this week I could take back and demonstrate to my students. Um, I do teach uh, mostly physical science so with the 15 year olds demonstrating a lot of this stuff and making it inquiry based for them, I think will hook them in. And that's what I need because a lot of times when you just give them information, as you all know, they just kind of, okay. So I'm, I'm really excited to try to get that hook and try to get them interested in what they're learning so that they actually retain the information for later on down the line. Um, and thank you to Pat and Tom. You guys have been great, very informative, and you know, bringing it down to you know, what we can bring back to the students. So thank you so much. Our next teacher is David Rossiter. Hello, everybody. Um, had a lot of fun this week, met a lot of nice people, learned a lot. Um, a lot of it I think I've absorbed and will come out through the next several years. Um, I teach math and um, can be pretty dry, and there's a lot of things that we've done here that I can to use to liven it up. I think I'll also be able to um, work with the science teachers a little more closely. I'd like to do that. And I'll also be able to inform our students of material science, the different types of jobs that are out there, how much fun they can be. Um, it's fascinating. I think if I'd gone through something like this 30 years ago, I might be a material scientist. It's really, really fascinating. Um, thank you. Our next teacher is Melania Santos. Hello everyone, my name is Melania Santos. I teach chemistry and physical science at the Cleveland School of the Arts, which is across the street. Um, I was really excited when I received the email, which I'm not sure how Jeannie found out about me, but I was automatically signed up. It, I, I have a difficulty writing. It's not my forte. I prefer doing mathematical problems. But when I read the information about the material science cap, I immediately responded with my paragraph response as to why I want to be here. Because I automatically saw that I was going to learn the real life applications, which I have previously had very little exposure. Um, I've, there were many things that I learned here that I plan to use in my classroom, as we all do. And another component that was really nice was being able to um, discover a case for the first time. Although I work across the street, I actually have never been in the engineering building, and I plan to create relationships with people I have met so that you can visit my students. I, I feel as though my students have no familiarity with engineering. I don't think they even know what it means. And um, I'm not sure that I really had a very good idea of what it was either. But being here, I have a better understanding. And the simplest way of putting it is every time I talk about applied science in class, 
I'm essentially talking about engineering, and um, um, I'm, ex I'm very happy to have that connection now, and that's what the program brought to me. Thank you. Our next teacher is Francine Sharver. Hi everybody, I'm Francine. Um, last year, I don't have a science teaching job yet, still looking, but last year I was the permanent building sub at Riverside High School in Painesville, which we visited yesterday. And I got the unique experience of actually traveling throughout the school building and working with 8th through 12th graders. So I was the gym teacher one day, German teacher the next, and I was always waiting for that day. I'm like, I just want to be the science teacher. I want to go in. A, and I was so excited. And um, I think this camp has given me the opportunity to really excite students about science and having all these different experiments to work with and all the, the materials that were being sent home with, I never knew I was worth at least $1,000. So <laughs> we've been quantified. <laughs> um, but thank you to everybody at, at Case and thank you Pat and Tom. And I remember actually quantifying something in my paragraph to get into this program because I don't know what kind of school I'm going to be and I don't know what kind of budget and what kind of materials they're going to be and often you operate on that shoestring budget and now Pat has showed us today how to actually take a shoestring and make it into science showing that it can be a composite when it's covered in something and so uh, thank you for um, all of the ideas and ways to do that so thank you. Our next teacher is Carrie Seidman, returning for a second year. <laughs> well, I'm back for my second year. I failed last summer, so I had to come back. <laughs> um, I'll disagree a little bit with Tracy Davis, because I think I have the best uh, teaching job in the world. But I teach at uh, up the road on Fairmont Boulevard at Ruffing Montessori School. I teach seventh and eighth graders. Um, like her, I get to uh, pretty much write my own course of study. Um, and I was hoping what would happen is exactly what did happen, and that is that that binder is so thick that we couldn't possibly have done everything last summer. And we did, I would say, half the stuff we did this year um, I didn't do last year, so it was at least half. And I really appreciate the, um, the effort and time everybody puts into it. And it's nice to work with all of you. Um, and mostly we were talking about this in, in the line, getting food. It's nice to be treated like an adult. Um, when you come to a teacher workshop, not being um, talked down to. And um, in particular, I'm going to use the, the sulfur one. I can't wait to do that in school, the, the slow heating of sulfur. I'd never thought of that, never knew about it. And um, I just appreciate all the activity and all the resources. Thank you. Our next teacher is Patricia Swiderski. Did I say it right? I'm Patricia Swiderski, which Suniva said right, um, which is amazing because most people can't even pronounce it. Even my students call me Miss Durst because apparently Swiderski is too long to say. But anyway, um, I have those students that like to take things apart. And I never figured out a way to help relate real world concepts to them. And this camp has totally opened my eyes. And now I can kind of push them in that direction because that is what they like to do. So hopefully those are the future material scientists of the world. Um, so now I have a different aspect um, of engineering that I haven't really been exposed to, and it's, and it's, it's exciting. And um, Kentucky really didn't just get electricity like a week ago, but anyway, that's our running joke. Um, <laughs> but Kentucky doesn't really push, they want to push math and science, but it, there's really not a way to do that. And now there's a low budget, cost effective way to teach this to these students and I think it's I think for our school it's going to be exciting for us because m after Christmas they came back and they're like what happened to all that fun stuff that we did at the beginning of the year to so that I could get them excited about chemistry all the demonstrations and I ran out of stuff to do because there was only a limited number that I had seen or actually experienced and now I get to do that so thank you all very much I appreciate it and thanks to uh, Tom and Pat and Pat you're my hero now 
So thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm already looking forward to ASM 2.0 in 2010. <laughs> Remember, graduates, <laughs> commencement means to start. This isn't the end. <laughs> Our next teacher is Janine Zambo. He was in a Cub Scout, wasn't he? I was thrown off. Was you were? You kicked out of Cub Scouts? That's okay. It's never too late to learn. <laughs> I guess I won't get a job here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm Janine Zambo. I just graduated from college. I'm looking still, but I guess I won't be applying at Case. <laughs> but um, what I like about this is um, I love learning about applications and I love all the ideas. Since I'm new, I want all the ideas I can get. I appreciate everyone's emails, so when I do get a job, I'm emailing each one of you to ask for advice. I hope you don't mind, but um, that's what I'm doing. And <laughs> what I really like is that um, we are teaching about real life and talking about material science, and I've never thought about that as a degree. When I was in high school, it's like, what do you want to do with yourself? And you either think what your parents do or what your teachers, you know, whoever's in your area. And I like the idea of exposing kids to different job, um, job careers. And, you know, not just wait until your senior year. What major do you want to be in college? You know, I want them, I like the idea of exposing them to different job ideas. You know, whether it be nursing or materials. I was a quality engineer originally, which I changed my majors a few times. But there's a lot of people in college, they don't really know what they want to do. And I like the idea of exposing kids beforehand. Okay. Thank you. This is easy. Yes, it's getting easier, <laughs> except for me. We've saved the best for last. This is uh, Carla Zampedro. Oh, so much <laughs> That's right. You've got to bring us home, Carla. <laughs> I'm trying. Right. I'm trying. Right huh? hand. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. <laughs> I'll try to keep this short and sweet just because that's like me. I'm short and sweet. Um, <laughs> I, one of the things that I wanted to say, and I, and I know I'm probably completely putting myself out there on this, um, when, I was in, when I went to my first year in Florida to, to college and I ran into this guy and we were talking about our majors and he told me he was going into engineering. I asked him, so what got you interested in trains? You know, I, I had no idea what engine, I, I assumed he wanted to be a conductor or played with Thomas the Trains or something. I, I, I really didn't know. And I was a kid that was an honors product out of Parma. So, you know, I know that says a lot for the district that I currently work in. Um, but I think a lot about being a teacher is to try to clarify misconceptions. And obviously, I had a huge one going into my freshman year. And I think the one thing I'm going to take away from this camp next year, I, you know, they didn't have enough environmental science classes, so oh darn, I have to teach a physical science. And I was really nervous about that because our current curriculum for it at my high school and the other teachers that teach it, it's very lecture oriented, not a lot of hands on, not a lot of labs. And I was kind of like, you know, wincing when I heard, oh, I'm gonna have the second prep and oh. But after this camp, after the first day, I was just kind of like, wow, get me in there. You know, I love this lab book, I love all this stuff. And, um, and then I found out we're going to learn about polymers in, in my environmental science class, actually teach a unit on polymers that I was a little clueless on beforehand, but now I feel very, you know, like informed. And I'd like to thank everybody that ran the camp for that. And I'm just, you know, really excited. So anyways, I'll, <laughs> that wasn't short. <laughs> but, but I just thought, you know, it was a pleasure meeting everybody. I had a great time. <laughs> And I'd like to thank the Academy now. Um, <laughs> but thank you again. OK, 
today, we're just going to have a few closing remarks. Um, one is that uh, this camp is not free, and by that I mean we expect something out of you as you leave here. One is we would like you to make sure that you use as much of this curriculum in your coursework as you possibly can. You know, a lot of it, you're in a wonderful position to influence um, future engineers and future students. The other thing is that if you're interested in coming to the second year, which basically would enable you to then be a master teacher like Tom or Pat, um, those, there, there is a sign up for that and you would need to talk with uh, Jean Dethridge concerning that. We'd also like you to consider going back to your schools and telling the rest of the faculty about this program so that we can continue to offer it year on year and just bring in more and more teachers. Um, we really believe that there's, there's a lot here that could be really benefic beneficial in terms of teaching. And um, you know, so basically, if you can help us recruit teachers for next year, that would be great. Um, the other thing I wanted to put in a little bit of a comment about is the ASM Materials Camp for Students. There is a, a set of these camps that get run, and these are for high school students that are definitely interested in some aspect of science or engineering. In fact, they, they, we, we request that they have at least a B average and that they're in their junior, uh, sophomore or junior year, end of those times. Um, for that program and that can also the information on that can also be found on the ASM um, materials camp website so if you have a student that you think might be a really good candidate don't be afraid to point them at that because it's a wonderful experience Christina went through it last year she's so it, yes so um, I'm gonna hand the podium over to Chuck now and he can close out the uh, the program and then we can just take a little time and enjoy a little bit more lunch, and then uh, then we'll go over and reconvene just to say goodbye. Thanks, Thanks. Nina. Thank you. It was sure fun to, uh, to listen to your comments today, and I have to tell you how motivating that is. You know, uh, my job is one of the neatest jobs in the world. I get to meet teachers all the time and have such profound respect for what you do. And I know you take a lot of abuse from your students and your administrators and your communities. I know you don't get paid much. But I want you to know that there's a whole lot of people out there that love and respect what you do. Certainly uh, my colleagues in ASM and the engineering community have profound respect for you. But you know we all, if we think about it, have a teacher that changed our lives, don't we? We all have a teacher from middle school or high school or even college that changed our lives. I'm a product of parochial education, kindergarten through graduate school. I went to Catholic schools, oddly enough. And there was a teacher in my life that changed me, one negatively and one positively. Sister Ignatius taught chemistry. And on the very first day, she said, class, I've been teaching chemistry for 30 years. And the first thing we're going to do is memorize the periodic table. <laughs> and I slipped out and dropped the course, because that was not something I wanted to do. On the other hand, I had a teacher who had a little bit of confidence in my potential and gave me a little more self-confidence, and my life improved. So I want you to know how much we appreciate you every single day, because you're the future of America, and our nation needs you to inspire our students. As has been mentioned, uh, these camps are prolific. There are 54 locations in the U.S. If you go to the website, you'll see all kind of data. But suffice to say, there, are, there may be an opportunity or two yet this summer. So if, uh, if you do have a student you think would, uh, would work and enjoy this, check out the website. They may be able to get in. No promises. Equally for teachers, if you have a peer or a colleague who might experience benefit from this experience, there may may be an opportunity for them. We've mentioned the 2.0 camp at Ohio State. Uh, that's full for this year, and I think we're going to end up running two sections of that next year because we're beginning to get a groundswell. You are part of, you Ohio teachers at least, um, a pretty big group. We now have uh, 400 high school teachers like yourselves who've been through a materials camp in Ohio, and that number is growing exponentially. There are six schools in Ohio that we're aware of that teach a standalone material science course. Our hidden agenda is for you to do that, not so hidden. But think about it. Could you, at some point in your career, 
uh, get it together to teach material science to your youngsters as a course? The answer is yes. And there are others who've done it before you. The curriculums are designed, fully aligned with the Ohio, the Ohio Science Learning Standards. All those standards and the alignment to the material you received is available on our website. It's all been matrixed. So if your superintendent or, or principal wants to see proof of the pudding, it's there. It's there. A lot of work's been done. Finally, uh, an invitation to you to come visit us at the Geodesic Dome out in uh, Materials Park. Those of you who don't know where that is, if you know where Punderson State Park is, you'll find us. If not, just Google uh, Materials Park and you'll find us. It's the world's largest open-air geodesic dome. It's way cool. It's open to the public 24-7. Uh, Only one day of the year is it closed. Come out there. I Come in the summer because Materials Park averages 150 inches of snow. So you don't want to come in January unless you love to ski. But come out in the summer in the evenings, and you can sit under this beautiful dome, and as the skies darken, see every star in the universe through a beautiful grid and it's illuminated, it's a very beautiful experience. I'd like to add my thanks uh, to Case for hosting and sponsoring us. Jim and, and his colleagues have been marvelous hosts. Let's give it up for Case. Thank you, Jim. We're so grateful to the, to the folks here at Case for allowing us to, uh, to have use of your facilities and all your very talented faculty and administrators and staff. We had some wonderful lunchtime talks and uh, lots of good stuff. To Suniva and the Cleveland chapter, God bless you for making this happen. Thank you. Suniva is an army of one in some ways. Uh, she's a very modest woman, but she started working with us at ASM many years ago, went on to get her PhD here at Case, works at Swage Locks, as you've heard. She's a member of our board of trustees for ASM International, so she's a decision maker. If you've got something you think is important about what you've seen with ASM, talk to Suniva. Thank you and, and your chapter uh, colleagues as well for your support. Uh, lots of fun, lots of good stuff. The future is ahead. It's um, up to you to take some of this information and put it to use. And I think that you will. You may not even remember where it came from, but that's okay. Because it's all about borrowing and sharing and stealing. And as I used to say, uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. So if you found something here that's useful, use it. Call it your own. No one's going to sue you. Uh, with that, thank you all for being part of this. We'll be in touch. You will get future emails from us, rest assured, from Gene Dethridge uh, and, and my office. Uh, we'll take the liberty of, of communicating with you periodically in surveying, because we need to know if it's a good program and how to make it better. Continuous improvement provides for a better environment uh, for those that follow you. Thank you again for all you do for America's ch children.